Hello friends, Metabot here, and I'm going to make a quick little tutorial on how to get around Dragon Quest Tact if you don't know Japanese. Uh, fortunately, all of the buttons have like uh, picture icons and stuff on them, so they're pretty easy to remember and figure out, uh, but your first time through you might be a little confused. So here we are on the home screen. Um, after you get through the tutorial, you'll be able to get here. You can get here anytime pressing this uh, bottom left button down here with the little tent on it. But uh, starting at the very top, you have your uh, stamina and gold and everything in your rank. Then uh, if you press these little plus buttons, you can spend your herbs or gems to get more stamina and you can uh, buy gems here with real money, which I wouldn't suggest doing on a Japanese only game if you don't understand what's going on. Then below that we have the menu button. From here you can access your player profile, um, where you can change your little uh, avatar icon, which is cool. You have your uh, bag of items where you can see stuff. You have uh, a transaction history book. And then um, the letter down here with the little red stamp is uh, game news. The question mark is help. Gears are options. Um, these things down here is legal notices, uh, the like tied up scrolls. And then uh, an important one is this middle one on the bottom row with the green arrow pointing two menus together. That's data backup. You can uh, sign into your Square Enix Bridge account and back up your data there. I don't know if you need a Japanese one because I haven't backed up my data myself because I need to make a new Square Enix Bridge account because I can't remember my old one. <laughs> but um, I feel like I remember using an English Square Enix Bridge account on um, the Japanese version of Imperial Saga. So. You should be able to do that. You can make your account from there and anything. When you go into the account creation, it will auto-detect your language and it will be in your native language. So you don't have to worry about trying to create an account in Japanese. And then the next thing is just to go to the title. And when you see those orange buttons, they usually mean back. Blue buttons usually mean confirm. Um, so then uh, under the menu button, you have your present box. You can click this. Your gems will come into here. Um, no matter how you acquire gems, they will always come to your present box. So you have to come here and get them out every time, which is really annoying. And then in the bottom, you see the close button is orange again. To the right of that, you have a little um, blue button, and that's how you accept them all at once. But they're in pages, so it only accepts all on the page. So you have to keep doing that until you've accepted them all. <laughs> That's the most annoying thing about this game. And under the present box we have the event button. That will take you to everything with the current event. You can see it's the uh, Dragon King from um, Dragon Quest 1. And uh, that's what the event is themed around right now. So I'm guessing that will change depending on the current events. Um, and we'll look into that later. Then uh, down below down here by my little guy's feet you have this uh tact points you get tact points for doing various things like strengthening skills tempering leveling up and stuff and then you can spend them and then below that you have your missions this is going to be probably the hardest thing to understand if you don't understand japanese because i'm not going to sit here and be able to tell you what every last one of these things says but basically, as you accomplish various things in the game, you are going to complete missions, and they will have rewards. Um, then you can press these little blue buttons next to them to get the rewards. So if I want to get this experience thing, I press the blue button, I get the reward. Now these ones that say plus EXP on them and then have a number under them, those are player rank experience. And when you play a rank up, you will get all your stamina back and get more max stamina. This is the only way to get player rank experience. So I save these until my stamina is dead and then I want to continue playing and then I rank up. Um, so that it's more like I can time when I'm filling up my stamina again. So that I don't get... Uh, so I spend more time away from the max stamina using that to refill stamina over time. So we'll exit out of this. Then you have your buttons along the bottom. 
Like I said before, the um, bottom left is home, the tent. The little caravan button goes on adventures, um, and that's where you'll get into the main gameplay. This next thing with this like uh, tower thing is coming in a later update, so don't worry about that. The next thing with the slime knight and the, oh, I don't know my Dragon Quest monster names, <laughs> duck looking thing jumping. That's where you manage your party and uh, other stuff. It's the allies menu. Then next to that, you got uh, the scout menu. You can see the little portal with the stone tablet thing floating out of it. Um, that's where you go to do the gotcha to um, try and get new allies for your team. And then the last one over here is the shop. Um, that's a really easy one. You just go in there and you can buy stuff. <laughs> but uh, let's go look at the adventure menu since this was the home menu. Um, this is pretty easy to figure out. The very top one with the slimes is story. And that's where you'll go through your main story quests. Um, below that on the left is event. And so there's various events in here. Um, this one you can do once a day which is really nice, and you get a free character pull ticket. And uh, these ones for, let's say, 100 and 300 on them, those are uh, bonuses for getting, for 300 and, one, or blah, 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 for people who downloading the game. <laughs> for reaching the certain milestones, it's 300,000, right, no, Three million, one million, and three million. Is it? I you, converting Japanese numbers. I don't remember how to do it. I haven't actually spoken Japanese in like twenty years. So no, like fifteen years. So I forget a lot of stuff about Japanese. Anyway, then below that we have the event quests again, and then uh, I don't know what this thing is below because I have not uh, unlocked it. It says versus quests. So maybe it's some kind of PvP or something. Anyway, then you have Battle Road, which is the thing uh, under the story to the right. This is where you're limited in what kinds of monsters you can bring into the battles, um, which is really interesting. So you pick this uh, Slacked one first, and you go to Slacked Road. Here you can only use these monsters listed at the top. So it encourages you to use monsters that you're not normally using in your team and to power up and collect monsters of all different types um, as you progress through that you'll unlock these other ones like this is uh, slimes only stuff like that um, okay then back here we have across the bottom there are four buttons this is for daily quests stuff you can do every day this is uh, rank up quests um, you can get rank up items from that. This is equipment quests. You can get equipment and equipment tempering items from that. And then this is uh, skill powering up quests. And you can get items to power up skills there. Um, basically you get the items that are on the icons. Like you get the skill books, you get the equipment, you get the rank up orbs. Stuff like that. Um, I forget what all is in daily quests. Yeah, stuff I can't do. You have an experience quest with the metal slimes, and you have um, a gold quest you can do every day. And that's pretty much all the different kinds of adventures you can do. Uh, then we'll go down to the allies button, which is the next uh, menu on the bottom. And this is where you're going to be doing all of your team management and stuff. Uh, there's a lot here. Um, on this, don't worry about Linda up here, <laughs> this is a picture. Then uh, below it we have four icons here, we have, this is your uh, ally list, so you can just see a list of all the monsters you have. This is your party management button, the little scroll with the quill. Um, that's where you're going to set up your party and equip your monsters with items. Then uh, we have the mastery rank button. Um, I'll go ahead and click on that one because it's pretty simple. Oh, I haven't done it since I reset my data. Basically, you uh, collect monsters. And so this is my slime mastery rank. 
and it'll go up um, as I collect slime monsters and stuff like that. Um, this last thing with the crown is ranking. That's a leaderboard. Uh, not too useful. Then you have all your main buttons below. We have these six big buttons. This top left one with the stone man is level up. Click to go into here. You can pick a monster and you can give them experience scroll things. Um, just pick which ones you want to use and it will level them up. So like, let's say my troll needs to get to level 31 to learn Dark Spike. So if you click this little thing right here, you can see when they'll learn their next skills. Um, so let's go ahead and get him to level 31. We use that one, gets him to 30. Whoa, that puts him like way over 31. We use three of those to get him right to level 31 and that's it. Then you click this level up button in the bottom and he levels up. And they'll get experience and level up through battles, but uh, like if you're catching up a new monster or you want to get to a skill faster, you can level them up with experience scrolls here. And so he learned Dark Spike. And then we'll click back. And yeah, you can do that with all your monsters. We'll go back to the party screen. The next thing in the center here is rank up. And this is where you rank up your monsters. I don't know if I, yeah, all my little baby monsters, they're available for rank up, but uh, basically this will unlock their level cap and increase their stats. Uh, the max level for most of your powerful monsters is going to be 30. So you can see like this guy, I think I, yeah, I ranked him up already. And you can see he's an A1 now, which is higher than a rank A. They just start out as A and then they go to A1, A2 and stuff. You rank them up by giving them these jewels. So I would need six of the red jewels, three of the green jewels, whoops, nine of the blue jewels, and five of the orb statue things, which I have eight of those, so yay, but I have like zero of everything else. If you want to know where you can get them, you can tap on them and it'll show you quests that drop them. Um, you can also buy those in the shop, so you don't necessarily have to farm for them, but they're limited in the shop, so you can only buy so many like a week or a month or something, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't really looked that much into it. Anyway, after you put all those things in there, press this uh, blue button at the bottom. I'll show you on a weak monster. Let's level up Drackey, because he's a cutie. Actually, let's level up somebody that I'm gonna use. We'll, we'll level up uh, Baby Panther, because I use him in the road. Dark, whatever. <laughs> I already forgot what it's called. The thing with the limited monsters. So you just need to have all the things, and then you click this rank up button in blue at the bottom, and uh, it'll tell you how much gold you need. So it's going to spend 50 gold when I do this. And he goes from D to D1. And it'll show you his level cap raised from 20 to 30 and his stats all went up. And uh, wow, his HP went up 11. And uh, the other stuff went up a little bit. They get pretty good jumps from uh, ranking up. So you definitely wanna rank up your best monsters. Okay, we'll go back to the allies menu. Then this next thing on the right, I don't know what this is cause I haven't unlocked the ability to do this yet. So you come in here and you pick monsters and uh, you need tools. I think that this is like, you can add to their points. You get these points every time you pull a duplicate in the gotcha. And I think you can, and they unlock like uh, various bonuses for them. And so I think you can give them points without uh, pulling doubles here. But I don't know how I don't know how to do that because you're gonna need some kind of crystal items and I don't have them so that's my guess on how that will work <laughs> and what it looks like is when you go in here where this red text is there will be an item and you'll be able to click on it to use it and then click this blue button to accept it but yeah for right now I've not uh, gotten to that part yet then back here on the bottom left, we have the equipment tempering button. 
Um, I only have one that can be done with it. Um, but basically you pick a piece of equipment that you have. So I'll pick this uh, dagger thing. And then here at the bottom, I have, you can get these little like stones that have a picture of that particular weapon on them. And then you click this blue button and it will re-roll the bonuses that this weapon has on it. So you see at the top it has MP plus three and magic plus three. That will always be the same. But then in this big middle box down here, you get MP plus three and attack plus two. Those are special bonuses and every time you temper, you can re-roll those. Now, if you have multiple um, stones, you can press this plus and minus to choose how many you want to use. The other blue button is to use the max. I would use multiples at once if you're trying to re-roll because at least in my experience, it seems like the re-rolls will have better luck if you're using more than one stone at a time. I don't know if that's actually how it works or not, but it's how it seems to work in my experience. Um, it's really nice because you can tell what stats they're talking about by their little icons. MP and HP will say HP. Attack has a little uh, sword. Magic has a little um, scholar's caps. Uh, I don't know what speed it has, I forget. Stuff like that. You can tell the icon will make it pretty obvious what stat we're talking about. And then let's go back to uh, the ally screen again. This middle on the bottom is strengthening your skills. This is really, really useful. Um, I actually have some items so we can do it. So you choose a monster you want to strengthen their skill, then choose the skill you want to strengthen. And so this is Mera, which is a fire skill. Um, and then you choose this, and then you have these books, and I have five books. It costs one book to try, so we'll just press the blue button on the bottom, and we powered up Mira, um, and now it's 5% stronger. And again, just keep pressing blue button to, uh, confirm things. Then, uh, so you can see you can use more books. That's just so you can do more tries at once. Each time you succeed, the chance of a book succeeding goes down. So we'll just press to do the max here and try it out. Use up all our books. Oh. Well, it succeeded, so it stopped using books. Um, so now it's stronger. We'll just keep doing it until we use up all the books. There we go. So now our Mera is Mera plus three. We have two more books to use. It failed, and then so it'll use another book now. And it succeeded, so we have Mera plus four. That's pretty nice. It's now 20% stronger, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that's how you strengthen your skills. And we'll go back here. The bottom right thing is skill teaching. And uh, you'll get these scrolls to learn spells. So basically you pick a monster that you wanna teach a spell and then you press that little plus and you can choose one of your spell scrolls and you'll teach that spell from the scroll. Um, this is probably gonna be a little confusing because you're not gonna know exactly what the spells do. Fortunately, they have little icons and stuff. So I'm gonna click on this one, which is Mera, which we were just talking about. And so you can read the description of the spell here. Um, it says that it uses four MPs and that we're choosing Mera. Yeah, I don't know why it says that. Oh, we can reselect by tapping on it. Okay, then you see under this, you see this little grid with a square on it. That's the area of effect. So its area effect of this spell is one square. Then right above that you see this number three. This is important. That's the range of the spell. So Mera will hit three squares away from the monster when it's cast. You can't hit up to three. You can only hit three squares away exactly. So you have to be positioned three squares away from the monster to use the spell from the enemy monster. 
and then um, you can see in the top right it does fire damage and you see a little um, icon that shows a flame all of the elemental stuff will have these icons so you can tell um, what the uh, elements of the spells and stuff are um, so by looking at this if you don't understand what it says you can see the little square you know it's gonna uh, have an area effect of just one square right above that you know you need to be three squares away and by this little uh, elemental thing up here you can tell it's going to do fire damage so you can tell this is a fire spell and how far away you need to be and everything um, basically the bigger MP costs are going to be stronger um, you should be able to kind of guess your way around these the only ones that are going to be different or difficult is let's say like this Kiari spell this um, cures poison <laughs> so it's this is one that's gonna be difficult you can see above it that the number it says is one to two above the grid because um, that can be used one or two spaces away from the caster um, and it can be used on the caster too so that's why it's got kind of like a lot of words there but if you see something that looks like that that's what it means um, I'm not sure exactly what to do about those um, but if they're green like how this has a red bar um, that's for Mera spells the green is for healing spells and buff spells so you can at least know it's gonna be something like that um, that's the best I can tell you, sorry. <laughs> that's going to be one thing that's going to be hard is figuring out what those do. You can just use them and test them in battle. Um, you can usually find um, enemies that have, or you can usually find allies that you already have that have those spells, and so you can test them out in battle and see what they do. Uh, here's another example. This is a Gira spell. <coughs> So, uh, using what we said before, um, you can see that uh, this affects three spaces from three spaces away. And this one we actually have a little X because uh, the way you're facing also determines where the three spaces will be. But, um, and you can tell it's a Gira spell by the uh, little icon up here. And I think that's it for the allies menu. And we'll go to scout. This one is really simple. Um, basically, you can flip through the different banners here. And when you find the one you want to uh, pull from, you can pick one time or ten times. Really easy. Um, under the banner, there's this little brown thing right here that says scout stamps. Every time you spend 3,000 gems, you'll get one of these stamps. You can see I did it for this one. You can see get, 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 because I've spent 9,000 on this so far. You get these prizes each time you um, pull with a 10 times using gems. And so these are kind of like your pity gifts for if you don't get anything good and uh you see the fifth time you get guaranteed an a rank and the tenth time you get guaranteed an s rank so if you really really want an s rank monster pull from the same banner 10 times which is going to be thirty thousand gems which is a lot um these event banners are going to go away um you can see the little time in the bottom right uh, so this one is going to end on August 17th. Um, but this is the regular scout. It has one too. This is going to be here forever. So if you want to guarantee you get an, uh, an S rank, pull from this 10 times. Just keep pulling from this one. And you'll eventually get guaranteed an S rank. Um, I have two S ranks now without doing that. So it's possible to get them regular way. Uh, I 
think that's about it for here. You can see above the one scout thing, there's a little like ticket with a number. You can get tickets for free pulls. So if you click on the one time scout on the left, you can pick ticket on the right. You can pick gems. Uh, so you can pull with your tickets or your gems. Even if you save up 10 tickets, you don't get a stamp for spending 10 tickets at once. It's only when you spend 3000 jewels. Okay. The very last menu over here, shop really easy. You go up and down, uh, pick the shop you want, press the blue button to buy the things that you want. There's a gold shop. There's a tax point shop. Uh, there's mini metals. There's master metals. I don't know what this is. And then you have different tabs here. So make sure you don't forget that. This is the special events tab. So you can spend your Dragon Quest one medals with the event that's going on right now. This last one's special. You can spend your uh, Monon medals and stuff. Uh, and you'll get these for like pulling dupes and stuff. Um, you can buy premium items here with your gems. I don't recommend doing that. Um, and then you can buy set items with paid gems. If you see the gem has a little uh, yellow text on the bottom of it, that means they need to be paid gems in order to work for that option because it does keep track of the difference between your paid gems and your regular gems, your free gems. Um, for mini medals, you don't have to actually spend your mini medals. So once you hit one of these milestones, just come in here and push the blue button and you will get that reward. So mine is that ax looking thing, uh, Warhammer. <laughs> it looked like an ax from the icon. I didn't even read the name. So we get this Warhammer at five mini medals. And right now I have three mini medals. And uh, once I get five, I can come here, push this blue button and I will get the Warhammer. And uh, you can keep collecting mini medals this way. Um, I found a couple in chests, um, and I think I got one as a reward for clearing something. <laughs> I don't really remember how I got my mini medals, but this is how you get your mini medals, or this is how you spend your mini medals, and they won't go away. So I've gotten my one for one, and I got the Behoimi slime. And I still had one mini metal left. So I've gotten three total over the entire playthrough and I didn't have to spend one to get the Behoimi sign, which is a healer. It's pretty good. So once you get your first mini metal, you can come in here if you don't have a healer yet and get the Behoimi slime. He's not that great because his first skill is uh, like a tackle attack and it just does damage. Um, so you have to level him up to some level to get the Behoimi, but that's a really strong heal spell. Strong for early game. Um, <laughs> let's see. Okay, I'm going to go back here and look at some monsters and try to explain the stats. All right, so we have our stats here, um, and we have different tabs. Um, the top stuff is just their level and max level, and, uh, this weird little, like, jagged thing right here is how many dupes you've gotten, um, which will give them points towards that dupe stuff, which is all down here. Anyway, here's your stats. You have HP, and then under that is MP, under that is attack, and under that is defense. On the right, you have speed magic movement and weight i'm not sure what weight does because nothing seems to have a weight for me right now maybe that's going to be implemented in a later update um but an important one is above the weight this uh movement that's how many spaces they can move which is something you really want to know when putting um new monsters on your team then below that is experience points and how much experience the next level then you can see what levels they learn their skills. So he learns his skills at level 1, 31, and 51. Um, the different monsters will learn them at different levels, so you want to check that out. And then this is just all the bonuses they get for you getting dupes. 
This is where you can see their skills. Um, just like in the teaching menu, you can pretty much uh, figure out what they are from here. Uh, you can see this one has a sword and it's on a red button. Red buttons are attacks and swords are going to be like physical attacks. So you can tell this is a physical attack with um, electric property and it hits one space and it only hits one space away so he has to be directly next to them. And it does 180% damage of his normal attack. Um, Kaiser Dragon is pretty strong. This next tab shows the leader skill and some passive abilities. I don't actually know how you unlock these. It just says level one. That all that did was just say exactly what it is again. These probably you get through the getting dupes. But these are just what passive abilities they have and once he can get. Um, for example, max HP plus 30. Attack plus 15, stuff like that. This is not stuff you really need to, like, know to play the game. Um, then last you have weakness and resistance. Um, these are the different elements over here, so you can always... They always will have little icons next to them no matter where they are mentioned in the game. So you can always know what element something is talking about um, here. And uh, they have weird names, like... Maragira, Hyado, Bagi, Io, Dane, and Dorma. Because Dragon Quest is weird like that. But uh, over on the left, you can see the little white line means, of course, it uh, just affects them normally. The uh, purplish bluish color uh, words mean that they're half effective, so he takes half damage from Hyado and Gira. And then the three-letter word that's in the kind of uh, hot orange, yellowish color, that means that's his weak point. So from Boggy, the wind, and Dorma, the darkness, he takes twice as much damage. And then these are the same kind of things um, for status and debuffs and stuff. Um, this white text down here means he's immune to that and you can guess what all these things mean by their little icons um oh yeah and here's a fun little thing next to the monster's name um up here on the top there's a little pencil button if you press this you can actually name your monster <laughs> you can give them a pet name which is pretty cool um and then from a monster's page you can also come here and quickly go to the level up, rank up, skill learning, and stuff. Um, let's see, what else do I need to explain? I've explained how the monsters work and everything. I think we're pretty good. Let's go do a battle. And uh, I'll explain the UI. It is really simple and easy. Um, we're going to try out one that I haven't done yet. So, uh, I might do badly, but, uh, when you click on a quest, it'll tell you the name of the quest, um, you can see information on what enemies are going to be in there, and it'll show you their weak points. So, um, this is going to have a metal rider and a mud hand, and you can see the metal rider is weak to the wind element, the electric element, and stuff like that. Then below that, you can see the drops from this stage. So you can get all three colors of those jewels for rank up. And you can get 50 gems. When you see that little white text on the top right, I'm like pointing at it really carefully like you can see my fingers. That, uh, where the 50 gems is, how it has that white text in the top right. Um, that means you get that for your first time only. It's your first time completion bonus. If it doesn't have that white text, it means those things are possible to drop anytime you complete the quest. Then below you can select your party. You can set up multiple parties. I just have my one party so far. You can press the yellow arrows to switch between the parties. You can press the little blue button between the yellow arrows to go set up your party and it will go like as if you went to the allies menu and chose edit party. Then um, at the bottom, you got uh, the big blue button 
to set out on the adventure. <laughs> and this is how you start your battles. And you'll get some story. I always just press the skip button in the bottom right. But, uh, so if you don't understand the story, you're probably not going to want to watch it anyway. It's usually just some little character portraits and text. Um, before you fight bosses, there will be a cool little animation of the boss appearing. But yeah, you can skip everything with those little blue buttons. Now, when you first start, uh, I think you'll have to actually get to this in the tutorial, but, um, before you can do it. So, like, your first couple of battles, I don't think you're able to do it. But you see these little squares on the bottom, that's your starting spaces. You can tap a monster and then tap a different square and it will move it there. And you can swap monsters around and stuff like that. It's pretty intuitive. And so I'm gonna put my Kaiser Dragon in the center here. And uh, I'm gonna put my mages like here. No, yeah, this is what I need to do. Except I'm gonna put him because he can travel further and then my healer's back there. Okay. Sorry, I'm just kind of <laughs> planning out how I want my monsters. And then um, once you get your monsters where you want, you have this giant blue button that starts the quest. Um, you also have this blue button over here with the arrows on it. You can change what's displayed. Uh, I like to leave it on this because it shows the weaknesses of the enemies uh, and the elemental attributes of your monsters. Um, and so up here they're saying that the weak points of these monsters are electric and light. And then below that little two arrow monster button you have speed. So you have regular speed, fast speed, and then a super fast speed. Um, but that is locked for me, so I can only do fast speed. I keep it on fast speed. Um, and then below that is the auto button. If you click it, it'll start glowing. The monsters will auto battle while this is glowing. Press it again so it's not glowing. They are really stupid. They also will not open treasures. They will not target metal slimes. Um, they will just walk to a nearby thing and like try to attack it. They will not utilize weakness or resistance. They're just dumb. So generally you don't want to auto battle, which is cool because the game is actually pretty strategic. Later you can auto battle if you're just uh, farming a spot or something, so you can do it no hands. But uh, for advancing in the story and everything, you're going to want to pay attention and uh, actually battle. So we'll press our big blue button. And then the game starts when it's uh, basically monsters go in order of their speed. There's no like player turn, then enemy turn. You can see the timeline at the top. All my monsters are faster than the enemies though. So all five of mine are going to get to go before the monsters get to go. Or before, I keep calling them monsters, but everybody's monsters. Before the enemies get to go. Um, the blue is your range. Uh, the blue squares. So you can just tap anywhere and you'll walk around. Um, you don't confirm where you want to go, you just move. Then when you choose an action on the square, it will you'll end up on that square. Um, if you want to stay where you are, just double tap on the spot you are and you will wait in that spot. So don't tap on your monster if you're not wanting to wait. Then um, along the bottom, you have their different skills. The left thing that's selected right now is attack. That's always selected by default. So you can see the red squares around him. That's where he can attack. So if I go up here, I can choose to attack that mud hand. And uh, basically you just get into range, tap what you want to attack and it'll work. But I don't want to use his regular attack. Instead, I'm going to use Dorma. Oh, they take half damage from Dorma. Okay. And you can see the little blue... Um, thing next to the Dorma icon means that it's going to do uh, half damage, which is not good. But uh, this guy right here, the middle, the metal rider, he doesn't take half damage. He just doesn't take a lot of damage because he's beefier. So we'll move him here so that we're three spaces away, and then you tap the metal rider, and then you tap again to confirm, and you'll use that ability on them. And then uh, you see there's also this like gray button on the right next to the abilities. 
and that is a wait button, so you can just tap that a couple times and you will wait. Um, instead of tapping on your monster. And then with the different icons, um, you can tell like what they're going to be. Uh, like the red icons are going to be attacks, and if they have a little staff on them, they're going to be magic attacks, stuff like that. Um, well, this thing can't attack either. I mean, it's going to be doing weak attacks, so we'll move him up here. And we'll just, we'll use, uh, Merami on the mud hand. This is bad. <laughs> and then, uh, this thing's my healer, so we're just going to keep him kind of in the back here. So I can press this to wait, press it twice, and, uh, usually you have to press stuff twice to confirm. Um, we'll move him up here. And then he'll wait. I just tap on him twice to confirm. We'll move him up here. And he'll wait. And then now it's monsters or enemies' turns and they get to move around and stuff. Um, at the beginning of a turn, the leader skill will kick in. Uh, my leader skill is everything in the vicinity of the Troll King will um, get their attack lowered by. 10 or 20 percent? 10 percent. Um, so I can use Dorma again. I should have put the Troll King in the center. I didn't think this through. Troll King should be in the center. Um, but yeah, and basically, like, uh, if you want to use... Like, right now, he can attack it. If it has that little... Um, there's, like, a preview. You can see it has that little uh, casket thing. That means it's going to die if I use my attack. But if you want to use your other attacks, you just ready them by clicking on them, and then you click on the target to use them. I don't know if I explained that clearly the first time. Troll's got the big power. Bam. <laughs> He gets smacked, but he's okay. And then we'll just have everyone wait until we get back around to troll. And I'll show you, I guess I can show you how to heal even though it should be obvious. You just click on the heal, and then you click on who you want to heal. Ta-da! And of course they have to be in your range. Um, we'll have dragon attack the mud hand. This was a really easy battle. Um, sometimes there will be metal slimes in battle, and sometimes there will be treasure. Those are one-time only events. Uh, the treasure will stay there until you get it. I don't know about the metal slime, but I think it will only be in the battle that first time that you do it, and you'll get a lot more experience if you kill the metal slime. So make sure you kill metal slimes. Um, basically, you just regular attack them with any monster, and you have a chance of doing zero or one damage, and they have two HP. At least for all the metal signs I've found so far. So you don't have to worry about putting your strongest monster over by it. You can sit there and attack it with your healer until it dies. <laughs> which is what I do. And then we skip the story and that's pretty much how it works. If there's something you're still confused about, let me know. And uh, I will try to help out. I'm not going to sit here and like go through entire lists and try to translate everything. But <coughs> Excuse me. That should be enough to get you playing the game. And everything uses... Oh my gosh. <coughs> everything uses little icons and pictures, so it's pretty easy to figure out. And I'll see you guys around.